That is so cool. This is crazy. Okay, you gotta go see this. We're Aaron and Brandon. In May of 2020, we bought a Ram Promaster and spent the summer converting this van into our full-time home. Since August, we've been on a mission to visit 50 of the national parks in the United States. Before we visit park number 35, a quick holiday meal in the van. So it is Thanksgiving Day here in the United States, and so far we've had a pretty normal traveling atlas day. We worked this morning, we drove four hours through a beautiful Colorado scenery to another campsite, and now I have the task of trying to make a vegetarian Thanksgiving meal on two burners without an oven. Honestly, I think it should be pretty fun. It's a very low-key Thanksgiving, but we've had Stranger, I guess two years ago we were in Portugal, a year ago we were in Argentina. Never had a Thanksgiving out of a van though, so this will be a first for all of us. So I'm attempting to make a soup that I've made once before, Brussels sprouts, which I make all the time, and mashed potatoes that I've never made. I've seen my mom do it a hundred times. But first, since it's Thanksgiving, some wine. Wish me luck, give me some encouragement, throw a like up there. We'll see how this goes. This was the part I was most nervous about, mashing the potatoes with this, but it's actually going very well. You know, I'm pretty proud of myself. This is the first Thanksgiving dinner I've ever made, and I was a bit nervous. I don't know why, like, it's just the two of us, but I was like, Thanksgiving, the anticipation. Oh, and I didn't even mention this. For dessert, we have a pecan pie that we ate half of last night. I knew that was gonna happen, but whatever. Pecan pie is my favorite dessert, and I just couldn't wait. I saw it sitting there. It's not even the best pecan pie, but it's good, and I enjoyed it. Mash it up, mash it up. What do you think? Do you want to eat? Yeah, let's eat. Okay. The first Thanksgiving feast that Erin has made for us, and she did a great job. <laughs> I don't know if you can take it seriously with these hats on, but we're going to continue wearing them. So we wanted to stop by the visitor center, even though we figured it was gonna be closed. But after reading up and looking at some maps, we have an idea of where we're gonna head. Unfortunately, because of the pandemic, you can't do any tours, which would have been really, really cool because you get to go inside the dwellings. Mesa Verde is an ancient site of the Puebloan people who lived here from 550 AD to 1250 AD. And this is the only national park that that protects an ancient prehistoric site of ancient people and their society and their dwellings. So it's really unique in that way. It's unlike any national park we've been to so far. Unfortunately, we can't see a whole lot because of the pandemic, um, but we can see overlooks of the dwellings. Is it pretty much just overlooks that are yeah. available? To see the cliff dwellings, you just walk to overlooks. You can't walk down the Okay. Just overlooks for today. Hopefully we can see some cool cliff dwellings. heading towards the Cliff Palace, which is the thing to see here. It's got over a hundred rooms. It's like, if you see a picture of Mesa Verde, you see a picture of the Cliff Palace. So hopefully 
we get a good view from the overlook. So I think there are more than 600 dwellings here and most of the dwellings have about 10 rooms, which I think that's even a good amount. But the Cliff Palace, Balcony House, and Spruce Tree House have over or close to 100 rooms each. So they're the things to see. Oh, I see that. Yeah. Wow, that's really cool. Whoa! Oh my goodness. That is so cool! I truly didn't expect to be able to get this close to it. Now I'm super annoyed that we can't go down. That would be so cool. This is crazy. Okay, you gotta go see this. Whoa! This is insane. Look at the ladder. You can climb that ladder. Oh my god. Mesa Verde has now been elevated to the number one place I want to come back to because while we got to see it, we didn't get to tour it, which would be so freaking cool. So we're going to come back. I appreciate the fact that I was not the only one to have a reaction like that. Everyone else who showed up after us had a very similar reaction of just like, whoa, oh my God, wow. It comes out of nowhere. It's very unexpected. That first dwelling that we saw, I was like, oh, okay, cool. I didn't think it was the palace or anything, but I was just like, that's what they must look like. And then you turn and you see the Cliff Palace and it's, wow. That was awesome. That was sick. I can't wait to see the other two. <laughs> Brandon and Erin from the future here. We wanted to quickly shout out that we are launching some new merch. If you remember a couple of months ago, we shared our first line of merch traveling atlas live alternatively and we wanted to try something a little bit different this time so <laughs> Woo! we wanted to make a line devoted to live alternatively because it's the theme that we base our life decisions on we want to live our life on our own terms we want to be happy now not just delay happiness in the future and we also, by making the merch, want to start a conversation. If you want, comment below. Tell us what your dream is or tell us how you envision yourself living alternatively. But before we let you go, we want to show you that we have a lot of different colors, a lot of cool stuff. So check out that link in the description. And here's a fashion show because Brandon hates it. She made me do it again. actually see the balcony house from where we are because it's directly below us but where we stopped before I could see the ladder that I guess archaeologists or when you tour it maybe the ladder that you come back from it said it was the exit that's what it would look like though and I was reading that the tours of the dwelling are only four dollars I read that it's the best four dollars you could spend oh uh, 2020 why why We took the trail down to the Spruce Tree House because we thought we might be able to get right next to it because we saw people there. But turns out those people are the people going off trail, climbing up to then get to the trail. But it's closed, so we're not gonna do that. We're climbing back. We'll just try to get the best view from the overlook we can. We're rule followers when it comes to national parks, so we will not be off-roading today. There's apparently some strict video surveillance that I don't know what these people are gonna get in trouble for, but, cause we've seen it happen before. 
banned from national parks, so. This is about as close as we can get to the spruce tree house. And I think we've seen about everything we're allowed to see during COVID without doing trails. But as the park ranger said, the trails don't get you closer to the cliff dwellings. So that's why we're here. That's what we want to see. I think we've seen enough to make us really, really want to come back and we will one day, but unfortunately this is all we can see. If you like our videos, make sure to give us a thumbs up, subscribe and live alternatively. We'll see you next week. How cool is that? The one thing that's open in the park is the post office. So I just mailed some postcards, like tiny little post office in a national park. I love it. Got the sun temple over there. House of many windows. Oh, over here. Oh yeah, that's cool. Can't really see it, but that's sunset oh, house. Rooms, this house. Can you imagine just living on a ledge or living on the side of a cliff with a canyon below? The way these people must have built these houses and then how they got to them. Like, okay, time to go home. Let me climb up a canyon or did they rappel down from the top this is like mind-blowing